Hey beautiful family, so I'm back and we are going to be doing some more Bible study and the Holy Spirit Encounter Bible. Uh, it is a study Bible. If you're wondering about this Bible and why I am doing this, for starters, um, this particular Bible is just so expensive uh, to purchase and it's such it's such a good treasure. It's such an amazing blessing. I can't keep it to myself. And I know there are so many people who, who just simply can't afford this Bible. Um, it is an older Bible, as you can see. Uh, this one um, I actually uh, purchased used from a secondhand store uh, online. I can't remember who it was exactly. I don't. I don't know if it was uh, Thrift Books or ex exactly who it was, but I did purchase this offline or online. Excuse me, online, and um, by God's good grace and mercies, I actually um, per I was able to purchase it for a fairly inexpensive. It was like forty forty five dollars. Uh, and, uh, to, to let y'all know about where the price range is, uh, on Amazon, Amazon is the only place that, where I can find it actually new, um, to my knowledge anyways, and they have the soft cover, which is actually the paperback. And they, uh, last time I checked, it was like 50, um, 55, 60 bucks for the paperback. And this is a hard hardback. So for me to purchase this for like $40, $45, um, that is actually amazing because uh, the hardcovers um, through th thrift books and so many other secondhand stores, um, they are selling them in eBay. eBay. Actually, that's where I got it was eBay. Excuse me, eBay. Um, they are selling this Bible for like a um, hundred plus dollars. Um, pretty expensive um, and maybe even 60, 70 bucks, but it's, it's expensive nonetheless. But this is such an amazing Bible um, and there's so many great nuggets in it, um, have these moments and some actual Bible studies. And I'm just going through the entire Bible and we're looking at, uh, taking a look at every single Bible study in this Bible in moments. And um yeah, so I'm so excited about it. We are in um, uh, in the New Testament, so we are almost through with it. Uh, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to believe that we're almost through with it already, but it's just been an amazing journey. So with all that said, and I do want to say really quick, uh, if you want to support the channel and if you love Bible, um, Bible reviews, Bible giveaways, package giveaways, uh, Bible studies, um, and me just... Um, Bring y'all along with some of my um, 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 my journey, my walk with Christ, and just sharing with y'all what uh, everything he um, lays upon me to share. If you're into that stuff and you like that stuff, uh, make sure uh, you like, share, comment, subscribe, click the bell icon, and click all so you get notified each and every time I upload a new video. And um, I last time I looked uh, on the um, and to see how the channel is doing and stuff. Y'all, there's like 70, I believe it was like 78% of you, of the of all the viewers, y'all, have not subscribed to the channel. It's like 75, I believe it was like 75, 78, somewhere in there. And that blew me away. So three quarters of the viewers have not subscribed. That's mind blowing to me. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, y'all. And it's a great way. Uh, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing are great ways to sh help support and share um, uh, the channel and get it out there in the algorithm. So with all that spew <laughs> taken care of four minutes into the video, <laughs> um, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. I believe we should always put God first. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, this blessing, this opportunity. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives and in this world. And uh, we thank you for what you will do, Father. And, Father, I, I, I know I'm just feeling it laid upon me right now. I know there are some people who are just really going through a tough time, Father, a very tough time to the point to where they don't feel like they will, they will get through it. Father, I just ask. I ask that you give them, uh, may they feel the strength you've blessed them with and give them courage, give them peace and comfort. And I thank you. I thank you. And we uh, invite the Holy Trinity into this Bible study. And <clears throat> 
We ask that you lead us, teach us, guide us, and uh, illuminate what we need to see, convict us of any convictions we uh, we may need. And it's all in your name, Jesus. Pray these things. Amen and amen. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this bad boy. And here's where we stopped in 1 Corinthians. We made it to 1 Corinthians, y'all. I will bring y'all in a little bit there so y'all can see a little better. So here we are. It is going to have us to be, I'm going to get my little stylus here, have us to read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. So let's go ahead and flip on over. Um, this is the NLT translation, uh, so if you want to just pause the video and check out um, your translation on this, that's perfectly fine. So here we are, 11 to 13, and it reads, No one can know what anyone else is really thinking except that person alone and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit and God has actually given us his spirit not the world's spirit so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us when we tell you this we do not use words of human wisdom we speak words given to us by the spirit Using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. Knowing God. I love these moments. Uh, if you've been watching channel very long, been watching these videos very long, y'all know already I love, love, love these moments. They're incredible nuggets. Um, knowing God. Through the Holy Spirit, we know God. One of the incredible benefits of knowing God's Spirit is knowing the wonderful things of God that are freely given to us, including salvation and the incredible benefits and gifts of His Spirit. Thank Him for all He for all His wonderful gifts. Question: Can you make a list of some of the incredible benefits of knowing God? Absolutely. Yes. Just his comfort, his love, his peace, his joy, his power, his authority. Mm, there's so many things. Okay, this one is going, okay, I'm not going to read it again. We just read um, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 13. I'm not going to read it again, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. The Spirit's words. Spiritual truths are not communicated through human words, but through spiritual words that go beyond natural explanation. Worldly wisdom can never fathom the Spirit's wisdom. Human language can never ascend to the heights of the Spirit's wisdom. Only spiritual, uh, spiritual language can explain spiritual truths to those in the Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to understand the language or tongues of the spirit pray for both the language of the spirit and the understanding of spiritual things question how has the spirit used spiritual language to communicate spiritual truths to your life and through you to others awesome question love it mm. very good question Next one is a 1 Corinthians 3.16. So let's go ahead and flip back. And 3.16 is right here. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? The temple of God. Believers are the temple believers are the temple of God because the Holy Spirit lives in them. Such a temple is holy since the Spirit is holy. We are to keep God's temple holy by living our lives in purity and holiness. 1 Timothy 4:12 and Romans 6:19. Question. What changes do you as the temple of God need to make to live in purity and holiness? Hmm. 
Me, personally, I just need to get closer to God. I really need to get closer to Him. First Corinthians six eleven, cleansed and set apart. Oh, let's go ahead and read scripture. Whoops, I'm trying to jump the gun here. Trying to jump the gun here. Need to slow down a bit, right? There was a time when some of you were just like that, but now your sins have been washed away, and you have been set apart for God. You have been. Uh, you have been made right with God because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God has done for you. Amen. Cleansed and set apart. As the living wa water of the Spirit flows out of us, He continually washes and cleanses us from sin. As we confess our sins, the Holy Spirit continues to cleanse us through the blood of Jesus, 1 John 1, 5 to 10. His holiness separates us from the world so that God can use us. But before the Spirit can use us, we must be consecrated, dedicated, and made holy for his purposes alone. Question. By your act of confection, by your act of confession, what areas of your life could the Holy Spirit cleanse, sanctify, and dedicate for his purpose? Well, me personally, if I'm being honest with myself and with y'all, with me, I know my heart can, can use some more cleansing and purifying, and so can't my thoughts. My thoughts a lot of times get me in a whole heap of trouble. You know, sometimes I just rely on the flesh way too, way too much. And I need to stop doing that. I've got to rely on our Heavenly Father. Okay. Okay. So for what we're doing next is this Bible study, which these Bible studies in this Bible are truly amazing as well. Great nuggets uh, and a, a great additions, addition to this particular Bible. Um, and just another reason why I love this Bible so much. Um, now, when, I come, when it comes to these, uh, I don't always read the... Um, scripture that it has us to read which is going to have us to read Ephesians 4 so if you want to go ahead and pause the video right now and go ahead and read it it is going to summarize it and the um, uh, what we're going to be reading it does summarize it um, some so without further ado uh, let's go ahead and jump into this study the Holy Spirit's presence in the church brings unity among the believers. In Corinth, division occurred when jealousy and pride drove wedges of hurt between people. 1 Corinthians 3. Paul wrote, we work together as partners who belong to God. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. We should never take pride in, f in following particular human leaders because we belong to Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 21 to 23. Ephesians 4, 4 declares, Always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves together with grace. We all we are all one body, we have the same spirits, and we have all been called to the same glorious future. Ephesians 4, 3-4 to What causes division in the body? And it's going to have us to check things. You have seen cause division among Christians. 
So um, I will go ahead and go through this list and I will tell you all what I have personally witnessed with my two eyeballs. Um, I don't mark in this Bible, at least not, not right now. So I'm not going to actually physically mark it. Okay, so we have jealousy, following different people, different difference over how to handle finances, anger, hurt, doctrinal differences, and quarreling. Um, what I've personally witnessed... I would have to say jealousy, anger, hurt, doctrinal differences, following different people, definitely. And that's about it. I, as always, I would love to hear y'all's answers down in the comment section below. That would be great. I love reading them. Okay, now for this part here, moving on down, or not there, sorry, there, <laughs> moving on down. What brought unity in the spirit for the early church? The key is found in Acts one fourteen. They all met together continually for prayer, which is, I am so thankful for the church I found, I have found uh, definitely a blessing because that's what they do. That church is built on the Holy Spirit, is built on prayer. Love it. The early Christians worshiped together, met in homes for the Lord's su Supper, shared generously and with joy, and prayed together. The Holy Spirit flowed freely through them as they met and prayed together, bringing unity and harmony. What is the Holy Spirit leading you to do with other Christians to bring unity to the body? Is there some person in or some group of or believers that you need to be reconciled with because of past division and strife? Write a prayer seeking unity in the Holy Spirit among believers, specifically praying for unity with any believers with whom you have had strife. Encounter PowerPoint. These are good too. Mm. The Bible is good. This Bible is awesome. Are you asking for more of the Holy Spirit? Satan seeks to cause division and discord among believers. But encountering the Holy Spirit brings love, peace, and unity among believers. God's word insists that every believer stay united with other believers through the power of the Holy Spirit. Division and discord are simply not an option for living the spirit-led life. Mm, so true. I just want to see what we're looking at here. Oh, that's a long one. Oh, dear. Okay. All righty. Okay. So this moment is going to have us to read uh, chapter 6, verse 19. It's right up here. Or don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and who, who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. I'm going to read uh, verse 20. For God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Amen. That is such an important message for us to always remember. Mm. You do not belong to yourself. You do not belong to yourself. If we are followers of Christ, we don't belong to ourselves. And I'll be quite quite frank with y'all as well. If uh, Even if we don't belong to Christ, if we don't follow Christ, we still don't belong to ourselves. Because we either we have a master of some sort. Someone is a master or something is a master over us. Even self, even if we're, um, you're a mastery over yourself, and that's the way you believe. It's self, 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 self. 
It's still not yourself. You still don't belong to yourself. You belong to the enemy. You belong to Satan himself. And the demons that are in you. Once you became a temple for the Holy Spirit, your ownership was transferred to God. You belong to him. Inherent without us exists the unending desire to belong. Once we belong to Jesus, that desire is satisfied for eternity. Avoid all sexual immorality and sin. Keep your body pure, for you belong to Jesus and are the temple of his spirit. 1 Corinthians three sixteen to 17. Question. What temptation do you need to resist to continue keeping yourself pure? The only temptation I keep thinking of is chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. I love my chocolate. Chocolate and snacks. I love them. <laughs> oh, that's the only thing I can think of right offhand. Let's see here. Maybe do one or two more. Pardon my reach. I think we'll do probably one or two more. And then we'll quit for the night. For the day. For the morning. Whatever it is where you're at. Um, uh, moments. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 40. And it reads. But in my opinion. It will be better for her. To, if she doesn't marry again. And I think I am giving you counsel. From God's spirit. When I say this. Counsel from counsel from the spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave counsel. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Gave counsel through Paul. For, for the believers. As the counselor. The spirit applies the wisdom of the word. To real life situations he will speak through believers to give wise counsel that is rooted in the word of the body of christ or to uh, uh, rooted in the word to the body of christ question what wise godly counsel has the spirit given you through other believers and are you listening mm. i tell you what y'all i have been seeking counseling here Lately, more than usual, that's for sure. And I, I know a lot of us are just having a really tough time right now. And y'all, let's keep Canada in our prayers and all who are in the United States and surrounding countries that are having issues um, with the air quality due to the burning. Let's keep everyone in prayers. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 to 4. So I want you to know how to discern what is truly from God. No one speaking by the Spirit of God can curse Jesus. And no one is able to say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts. But it is the same Spirit, same Holy Spirit who is the source of them all. Many gifts, one Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspires faith within us to confess Jesus Christ. Then the Holy Spirit operates within us through many kinds of spiritual gifts. One source gives rise to every gift. The Holy Spirit uses gifts in believers to minister to the saints. Give thanks for the gifts he uses to minister to you and through you to others. Romans 12, 3 to 8 and 1 Peter 4, 10. Question, what gifts what gifts has the Spirit empowered in you to minister to others? With me, I know definitely generosity. Generosity. Um, that's, I'm trying to think right offhand. Um, generosity. Very generous person. Um, let me see here.
Um, it's the only thing I can think of right offhand. I know there's there's others, but definitely uh, generosity is uh, a big one for me. Um, as if you've been following the channel very long, y'all already know that. Um, I am definitely a giver, giver, giver. I give my time. I give every. I give everything I possibly can. So we're going to go ahead and stop it here. Um, and we will pick it up, Lord willing, uh, next week. And um, I just want to say thank you so much for all of you who have joined, uh, joined us in this study, continuing the study of this beautiful, amazing Bible. And um, remember to pray, pray, pray. Prayer is so crucial. And until next time, much love. God bless.